I want to mine Bitcoin, but I don't know what miner to buy. If this is you, watch to the end of this video and you will learn all of the differences between each type of Bitcoin miner and the various trade-offs you need to consider. Blockware has tried to make this as seamless as possible with our deal score metric. And what deal score does is it takes everything you need to know about Bitcoin miners and compiles it into one solitary metric to try to measure which miner is the best. Now, best miner is always going to come down to your personal circumstances. What you think about the Bitcoin price and the market and what the market's going to do, how much capital you're willing to deploy, how much risk you're willing to take, how much of an electricity bill you can float out of pocket every month without having to sell any of your Bitcoin. There's lots of things to consider. So deal score isn't the tell all be all, but it does a really, really good job at boiling down some of the very, the very most important metrics. So let's break this down one by one. And we're looking here at the Blockware Marketplace. We have it sorted by highest deal score and the S21 Pro 234 terahash priced at $4,300 per machine ranks at the top right now. And we've got some of these XPs ranked pretty highly as well. Um, so let's click into the deal score and hash rate. So this is the first thing to consider, which is how much Bitcoin are you going to mine with this machine? The higher the hash rate, the more Bitcoin you will mine. Typically, machines with a higher hash rate are newer. They have more efficiency, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're just purely concerned with how much Bitcoin are you going to mine, um, total hash rate is the metric to look at. Next is price efficiency. So how effective is this offer based on price per terahash? Now, this can be somewhat skewed and you want to consider all of the different trade-offs, right? You don't want to take any one metric at face value. But this is looking at price per terahash. So if hash rate's really important, you know, how much Bitcoin are you going to mine? How much does it cost to mine that Bitcoin? If you look at some of the older miners, we'll look at the S19 J Pro Plus, for example. You can buy them for as low as $3 per terahash. So if you click on the deal score, it does great in terms of price efficiency. That metric, it's got a 76 out of 100, but it really pales in comparison on all pretty much all of the other metrics. You could see here in terms of profitability, you know, six of these miners gives you $18 in profit per month. So not that great of a unit, which makes sense. This unit is pretty outdated. So that's what um, price efficiency is looking at. It's looking at price per terahash. A lower price per terahash is going to be more cost effective. And this kind of allows you to measure each miner's price on an equalized basis because the S19 J Pro Plus has 120 terahash versus the miner we were just looking at, the S21 Pro, has 234. So more terahash is going to be more expensive. But how much is, does each terahash cost? That's what price per terahash is looking at. And we incorporate that into deal score. Next is power efficiency and i'd argue that this is probably the most important metric if not one of the most important because a lot of the other things to consider in terms of profitability and different factors to consider are derived from the power efficiency so this is watts per terahash so you have dollars per terahash how efficient is this on a cost basis and then watts per terahash which is how much power does this miner consume to mine that Bitcoin? So a simple way to calculate this for yourself is to take the energy consumption or the power usage of the machine, which in this case is 3.51 kilowatts or 3,510 watts, and divide that by the hash rate of the machine, 234. So if we do 3510 divided by 234, 15 watts per terahash. That's pretty good. And lower is better. So, for example, if we go to one of the S21 XPs right now, if we click on their deal score, you can see power efficiency 100 out of 100, which means it's the very best in terms of power efficiency. We can take this 3.65 kilowatts, so 3650, and divide that by 270, and it's going to be 13.5 watts per terash. So, lower is better. So, that's power efficiency. 
Very important metric, and you want to consider this. 90 out of 100 is pretty good, which means it beats 9 out of 10 miners on the marketplace. And then next is estimated profit. So this is purely your monthly profitability, or you could even think of it as your kind of operating margins. So one of these miners every month is going to earn about $172 in net profit every month. This is taking the revenue in the, you know, the Bitcoin you mine and subtracting your monthly electricity costs, which is about $195. Under the current market conditions, you're looking at a net monthly profit of $171. Now, this is a metric and deal score that can change based on the Bitcoin price. So this deal score is not necessarily static. It's a dynamic measure and changes in the Bitcoin market can change which miners might be the best at that given time. So this is one of those, those things that can fluctuate with the Bitcoin price. The Bitcoin price goes up. Of course, every miner is going to become more profitable, but the relative profitability could possibly change. So for example, if Bitcoin's price dipped significantly, the S21 XP or other more, more power efficient miners, you're going to see their relative profitability actually increase because they're going to, you know, if Bitcoin really went into a devastating bear market, only the most efficient Bitcoin miners would be able to keep large profit margins, the XP being one of them, versus all of the outdated hardware might become unprofitable or, or be underwater. So this can change. It's dynamic with the Bitcoin market. And so that's another factor con to consider. Next is the estimated break even. And this means what are you effectively buying Bitcoin at? With the S21 XP, for example, because it's able to produce Bitcoin at a very significant discount, you know, you can see three miners here produces a $600 monthly profit. You're paying 600 in electricity and you're mining $1,200 worth of Bitcoin. You're effectively buying Bitcoin at half price. When we math it out, it's about $55,000 per coin that the S21 XP is mining Bitcoin at or effectively buying it. So you can think of this machine as dollar cost averaging at a discount. And so estimated break even factors that in. What, how big is that discount? What are you actually effectively buying Bitcoin at when you run this miner? Lastly is estimated capital efficiency. And for some people, this may be the most important metric to consider when you're evaluating which miner to buy. And this measures how much profit are you producing per dollar spent upfront on the machine itself. So profitability relative to the cost of the miner. And generally, the more expensive a miner is, the more profit it's going to produce. A more profitable machine that's more power efficient and has higher operating margins, a lower Bitcoin break even price, generally that machine's going to cost more. And so what you really want to consider with this is how long is it going to effectively take me to earn back what I spent on the miner? But it gets a little tricky because that's going to have a lot to do with the Bitcoin price. Now, we have a profitability calculator, which if you don't know how to use it, click the link in the description because I already posted a video showing step-by-step -step how to use this profitability calculator. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. But allow me to give you an example using kind of a lower lower cost machine. Let's say you take the S19K Pro. This only costs $6 per terahash roughly. A single miner you can buy for 780 bucks. Very, very low cost. But as you can see, the profit margins are a lot smaller. So one unit is profiting about $40 a month. If Bitcoin were to absolutely go on a massive bull market to close out the year, Bitcoin's price goes from $125,000 to $200,000. Because this machine costs so little upfront, you could actually pay back the cost of your miner very, very quickly with lower cost, older machines like this. But you're taking a risk because if Bitcoin's price were to dip, you know, you could go from making $40 a month to making $0 a month with this miner. So there's a plethora of trade-offs to consider. If we go back to ranking them by deal score and we take the S21 XP that costs about $7,000 per miner, even if Bitcoin goes on an absolute tear to close out the year, it's still going to take anywhere from 12 months to 24 to 36 months to actually get back the capital you spent on the machine. So 
you have, it's unlikely that you'll pay it back immediately like you possibly could with the lower cost machines, but you have so much more room for error if the Bitcoin price goes down. So that's where risk tolerance and market expectations really come into play when you're trying to decide which Bitcoin miner to buy. At the end of the day, your safest bet is going to be the miner that has the best power efficiency and the best break even. But that's not always the case because sometimes other miners can still be very profitable, very effective, very power efficient, and their lower cost makes it more enticing. So in this instance, this S21 Pro priced at $4,300 per machine, $18.4 per terahash, that makes it the top deal score right now because it's still very efficient, 15 watts per terahash. It ranks near the top in terms of efficiency, profitability, and break even, but you're able to buy it at a much lower cost. And so this may be the best miner right now. Market conditions can change. And so I always recommend checking the marketplace every day to see what is ranking highly right now and where the good opportunities are. So we've gone through deal score, but there's two other things you might wanna consider when it comes to purchasing a Bitcoin miner. And first is the cooling mechanism. And so we have air-cooled miners, we have immersion miners, which are put into an oil-type liquid, and then we have hydro miners, which use water to cool them. One thing you'll notice is the hydro miners have a much higher hash rate. They're able to mine a lot more Bitcoin because the cooling mechanism is more efficient. So you can run these miners at a higher hash rate and still maintain very good efficiency, but that comes with a trade-off in that these miners are more expensive. $8,000 a piece, more or less. One advantage to hydro miners is typically they have less downtime because the cooling mechanisms are a lot more effective. And two, they tend to have a physically longer lifespan. There's less wear and tear on the machine because the technology is better at keeping the hardware cool. However, machine lifespan often comes down more so to competitiveness and profitability rather than physical durability. You can always repair a Bitcoin miner and the technology is getting good where these machines can physically run for many years. So the best way to ensure that your miner has a long lifespan is by buying the one with the best power efficiency, best profitability, best break even, which most Bitcoin miners coming out now are able to last for much longer than they used to because the marginal improvements from machine to machine is diminishing. So a new miner coming out isn't making old hardware obsolete by any means. You, of course, want to upgrade hardware and, and stay on top of the curve. But generally, if you bought an S21 XP or an S21 Pro, you could expect to mine that for another four or five years into the future and remain profitable as you do so. And lastly, you might want to consider the location of the miner. And Blockware offers over half a dozen different mining facilities you can mine at. We've got sites in Kentucky, Texas, Oklahoma, North Dakota, Georgia, Iowa. We've got a bunch of different options that you can choose from. And creating some geographic diversification could be a very smart strategy. If, for example, it's really hot in Texas in the summer and your miners have more downtime then, well, if half of your fleet is in Texas and half of it's in Kentucky, you've got some protection there. Inversely, you could have some miners in some hydro miners in North Dakota, and then you could also have some elsewhere. And so if it's cold in North Dakota during the winter months and the miners have more downtime, you could have miners elsewhere to kind of compensate and ensure that you're able to mine Bitcoin during all types of environments. With Blockware, it doesn't matter which site you choose. We offer a base electricity rate of seven and a half cents per kilowatt hour. If you want a lower electricity rate, you can get that. You just have to purchase more miners. So if you're interested in just buying one miner, you, you know, you want to get your feet wet, see how this goes, go to the marketplace, you know, find something with a good deal score and go for it. You can fill out all the paperwork on the marketplace. You don't have to talk to anybody and you can start mining the very same day. But if you want bulk discounts and economies of scale, or if you just want to talk to a professional to learn more and have some questions answered, we can do that. Fill out the form below at mining.blockwaresolutions.com slash consult. A member of our team will be in touch and we can create a customized plan to fit your needs. So again, if you want to talk to someone or you want to purchase five or more miners and get some good deals, click the link below mining.blockwaresolutions.com slash consult.